Hello, I'm going to tell you guys about perspective blurring. Um, I coined that term, so it's not actually a thing, or it might be a thing, but this is what I'm going to call it. And right here I have um, a scene that I've already made, and I'm going to try to replicate it for you guys. Okay, so notice that you can kind of tell um, what things are in the foreground, which is more in front, and what's more in the background like in the back, like the trees. And then what's focused here is the actual um, image of the person. So this folder I already have. Um, they're just maple objects that you can find from Maple Simulator, nothing special. First, I'm going to pull the thing that's going to be all the way in the background. So I'm gonna put drag this into my timeline, okay. And sometimes when I don't feel like um, finding a sky image or background image, I just go to Media Generators, Color Gradient, and I just pull a soft blue backdrop, like so. This is just me being lazy, no big deal. Okay, now we want to um, edit our background image, so we're going to hit the pan crop window. And because you see how it's like cut off there, you don't want it to be cut off. So you go here and you hit 16:9 widescreen TV aspect ratio. Assuming that your project file is already um, in YouTube size 640 by 360 pixels. Okay, so this is going to be the background. Now after that, I want another image here on top. I have to go and fix it to 16:9 widescreen TV aspect ratio as well. And I'm just going to adjust it a little bit. And I'm going to pull another background. In my opinion, the more detail you put into a scene, the more aesthetically pleasing it'll look. Obviously, you can't always have time to make scenes, all scenes look fantastic, but, you know, little details matter. And now I'm going to pick this, um, I don't even know what it is, it's, it's pretty looking um, chair, I guess. <laughs> Alright, and I'm going to have the person standing in front of this. Um, I don't remember what it looks like. That's okay. That's about the same. And now I have the image of the character. I'm going to drag on here. And I also have to adjust the image of the character to 16 by 9 widescreen. If you want to flip your character around, you can right click and hit flip horizontal. She's just going to stand here. It's not going to be exactly like my first one, but it'll be close. And now I want something in front of the um, person. It helps when you add 3D details because it gives your camera angle a little bit of perspective, let's just say. So right now it just kind of looks like a cluttered mess, but after we finish our blurring, it'll look a lot better. Um, so what we are going to go to is Video FX Gaussian Blur. blur. Gaussian? God, I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm going to call it Gaussian because I just, I don't know. Wait, what is this? Okay. All right. So, um... I'm going to start with the object in the front, which is this. I'm going to um, put a blur on it. You can start with reset to none. And I'm going to go with like 33 in horizontal range, 0.033 and 0.033 vertical range. I have a lot of Gaussian blur presets. So if you want to save this, you go to preset and you can type in like 33 for 33 blur and hit the save button. I already have one though, so. 
And then because your person image is the focus of your scene, I'm not going to put any kind of blur on it. However, she is standing in front of this pretty little bridge. And this is stylistic choice. So this bridge, she could be standing like directly in front of it, or she could be standing a little bit ahead of it. So you can either leave it unblurred or you can just put a little tiny little blur. So I'm just going to put a very small blur and I'm going to do it as 0 0.005 horizontal range and 0 0.005 vertical range. And you can even save that as a preset too. So I'm not sure if you can tell, but um, you can see that the bridge now or the chair has a very slight blur on it. So now it looks more like the person is standing a little bit in front of the chair. Whereas this image that we first blurred looks like it's a lot in front of her. <laughs> okay, so the next is our first part of our background. So I'm going to give it, this is a guess and check method now, and I'm just going to say like 15.015 horizontal and 0.015 vertical. And that seems to look okay. So as you get further to the back, um, once again, this is totally a stylistic choice. You can experiment with different kind of blurs, but I'm just going to show you one way for now. You can um, blur images as they get further away from your focus. So what we had here was 0.015. So now we're going to make something that's a little more blurred. So let's go with 0 0.025 horizontal and 0 0.025 vertical. Okay, so that was what we just blurred. Now, all the way in the background, I'm just going to give it a really large blur. Oops, wrong. Um, I'm just going to go with an, let's go with 33 again. Of course, you can always use your presets that you save. And so now it looks a lot more clean for sure and not it's a lot less cluttered cluttered um you can tell where the focus of the scene is so right now it's on the person and you can tell that the bridge is only slightly behind her and then everything else is in the background of course you can always um, change up your blurs a little some people like to keep the background a little more clear it's all up to you it's a stylistic choice um, so what's cool about this is that you can change the focus of the camera, basically. So say, um, you see this a lot in movies, so say they'll be focusing on this tree branch in, right at the start of the scene, and then it's going to blur, and then it's going to focus on the person, if you understand what I mean. So that's very possible, thanks to Sony Vegas video effects keyframing. So you're going to click the um, video FX icon of the tree branch on top. You're going to notice that there's a timeline to keyframe your Gaussian blur at the very bottom. If it looks like this and you can't find it, all you have to do is drag upwards and it should appear again. Okay. So this um, timeline works just like your regular pan crop window. So I'm just going to add another keyframe. And in the starting keyframe, I'm going to get rid of my blur because I'm going to start with this focus and then end with it being blurred. And what's neat about this is that if you click this keyframe, you'll notice that on your actual timeline, it'll mark the exact moment that um, this blur is happening. And what you can do is you can click that and press M on your keyboard and that creates a marker to mark that spot as the exact moment in time that this keyframe is happening. It's very convenient. I use markers all the time. So now we're going to go to the person um, event FX. However, we didn't put a blur on her, so we're going to have to go to Gaussian Blur, reset to none, and drag a blur on her. See, if you drag this little 
time stopper thing, it's being dragged on your actual project timeline. And see, you can drag it so it's exactly on top of the marker that you just placed. So you can put a keyframe there. It's super convenient. So we're going to go back to the first keyframe, and you're no going to notice that the branch is now unblurred. So we're going to have to blur the person. I'm going to go with 25.025 blur to make things easy. And um, remember the chair behind her it was only very slightly blurred. We're going to have to fix that. Same process. Drag it to the exact moment of time where the marker is, add a new keyframe, go back to the first keyframe, and give it a good old blur. I'm going to give it a 0 .030 blur. So 0 .030. Just, okay. So, I don't know if this will, you'll really see it since I'm really laggy right now, but You'll notice that as the scene goes on, the tree begins to blur and the person comes into focus. This is a very awesome um, perspective technique that a lot of people use. I use it all the time, so just a tip for you guys. And that's my lesson on perspective blurring using, using <laughs> Gaussian Blur FX.